Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome back to another episode in my series on Shakespeare. I have done a lot of other videos ranging from how to read Shakespeare, how to approach him and some individual videos on specific plays as well. So if you're interested in watching some more after this video, I'll leave a link to the series in the description box below. Today we're going to be looking at The Winter's Tale and I'm going to start as usual with a brief summary of the plot and then we're going to get into a wider discussion on the themes and characters. The play opens with the King of Sicily Leontes and his wife Hermione, who have been hosting Leontes' childhood friend Polyxenes, who is the king of Bohemia, um, for the last nine months. Polyxenes wants to go home and Leontes says, no, please stay, you're my, you're my friend. Polyxenes says, no, 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 I need to go home and see my, see my family. But when Queen Hermione asks Polyxenes to stay, he changes his mind and says, yeah, okay, for you I'll stay. And this very small interaction then gets into Leontes' head that Hermione and Polyxenes are, have been having an affair and the child that Hermione is carrying is not his and it actually belongs to his friend. And very, very quickly Leontes goes down into a spiral of jealousy and fear. Um, he decides he wants to kill Polyxenes, he sends a man to kill him, um, although his servant Camilo, instead of killing him, warns Polyxenes that this is what's going to happen and they both of them flee to Bohemia and he throws his wife Hermione in prison, where she then gives birth to their daughter. Despite Hermione's handwoman Paulina bringing the baby to Leontes and saying, look, she is definitely yours, she's so beautiful, the queen is innocent, you must forgive her, Leontes will hear of it from nobody. So convinced is he that the baby is not his that he orders Paulina's husband um, to take the baby away and abandon it in some desolate place. He is utterly convinced that she's guilty and puts her on trial for adultery. While she is on trial, they get word that the couple's young son, Mamilius, has died. He's a young boy of about seven or eight and he supposedly dies from the fear and the trauma of his mother being thrown into prison and being put on trial. On hearing this, Hermione then collapses in the courtroom and dies of a broken heart. Word then comes back from the oracle in Delphi that he sent out to ask whether his wife was innocent or not. Word comes back that she is in fact innocent and it was all in his head and so Leontes is now left without his wife, without his son and without his baby daughter who has been taken by Paulina's husband Antigonus to the shores of Bohemia where he is then beset by the most famous stage direction in Shakespeare, exit pursued by a bear. Um, so he is killed before he is able to return back to Sicily. Luckily though the baby daughter is found by a shepherd and his son and raised as one of their own and given the name Perdita. Time then passes. In fact, a personified character of time comes onto the stage to tell the audience that 16 years have passed um, since the baby was abandoned, since um, Hermione was killed. And we open with Perdita as a young woman who has fallen in love with a young man called Florizel, who is in fact Polyxenes' son. So Polyxenes is very unhappy with this, that his son has fallen in love with a shepherd's daughter. So Polyxenes and Camilo go undercover um, at, a, at a sheep shearing feast where Florizel and Perdita are to be betrothed. And just at the point where they do become betrothed, he throws off his disguise and tells his son that he cannot be married to a lowly shepherdess. Um, Camilo then sort of switches sides and allows Florizel and Perdita to escape to back to Sicily where he is keen to return. Once in Sicily Florizel introduces himself to the court of King Leontes, introduces his bride um, and it's not until Polyxenes catches up with them that they all discover that Perdita is in fact Leontes' lost daughter and that's okay because Polyxenes is okay with Florizel marrying a princess of Sicily. Um, so everything is restored with the second generation. Um, then the very strangest thing that happens in the play occurs right at the end where Paulina um, comes to tell the whole party that she has a statue of Hermione that she's been building for the last 16 years. She unveils it to everybody and as if by magic this statue of Hermione comes to life and it's revealed that she has in fact been alive for these 16 years in hiding. Um, so it's, it's everything is very resolved. Leontes gets his wife, he gets his daughter back and considering the very very dark place where we started this play in the first three acts, um, the resolution is actually very very happy. The Winter's Tale is one of Shakespeare's later plays and the title itself, The Winter's Tale, um, is a hint to the fact that this isn't something that's supposed to be taken extremely seriously. Um, a lot of what happens in the plot 
it shouldn't be based in fact, it's very unrealistic, even down to Perdita being left on a beach in Bohemia when Bohemia didn't have a coastline. Um, it's, it's really not the same as one of the big history plays or something to be taken more seriously like Macbeth. This is just a nice tale where although it has tragedy, it has comedy, it has romance, everything is going to be resolved at the end of it. One could argue what is going on in Leontes's psyche, which means he is so, so quick to denounce his wife and best friend. Why is he, why he is so jealous, why he is so self-destructive and why he hates, seems to hate women so much. Um, there's quite a lot going on there. But to me, this isn't one of those characteristics that you can get very, very deep into. I think it's just a plot device. That's just the setting the scene for the whole story to come to unfold. Leontes is jealous. That's what we need to exist in order for the story to happen. It really is a play of two halves and one of the big themes in it is that of time. The idea of this passage of time that happens um, in the middle of the play, but also the idea of time standing still. So in the first half we have Leontes in Sicily. There's a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, jealousy, suffering. Um, it's a very cold, dark, wintry environment um, where this is happening. And when Florizel and Perdita arrive back in Sicily 16 years later, it seems like time hasn't passed there at all. The king is still in anguish. He hasn't remarried. Um, the kingdom itself is very worried that there aren't any heirs to the throne anymore. And it's almost as though this suffering, this pain has just continued. Contrasting this with Florizel and Perdita in Bohemia, it's very bright, it's very new, it's very reminiscent of spring. Perdita and Florizel really are like the second chances of their parents to either repeat the same mistakes or go down a different path and reconcile their families and make amends for the past. So we're simultaneously looking back at what happened 16 years ago, what has happened within that time, and also pushing forward for the future of Florizel and Perdita together. The issue of Hermione and the statue is also a kind of interesting instance of time. Um, when Paulina unveils the statue originally, everyone remarks that the statue is aged. It's not Hermione as she would have looked when she died, it's how she would have looked if she had lived and continued to age, um, which of course it, it is hinted at in the text, that is exactly what happens. This isn't actually a, a magical second chance given to Leontes. Um, but then that is playing with the idea of second chances and whether time can be reversed. Um, Leontes has lived for 16 years um, almost in stasis, in grief, thinking that his whole family is dead. Um, Hermione, then it, it transpires, has been alive. She comes back to him 16 years later, but their son, Mamilius, is dead. Like, he is, he is still gone, so even though he's had his daughter restored to him and his wife, we still do get a sense of the permanence of the son's death as well. So it's a really interesting mix of the resolution at the end of the play and everything being happy, but it's still tinged with that tragedy from the earlier acts. Although this is meant to be a lighter tale designed to entertain and not designed to be an analysis of the human psyche, it is actually interesting to compare this to some of Shakespeare's other works and how he handles other themes such as jealousy, revenge and young love as well. I think there's some interesting parallels between this story and Romeo and Juliet where you have two warring factions, two families who hate each other and then the younger generation coming together could be the thing that finally puts this family feud to rest. It could unite the families. Um, although it ends in tragedy, the families do end up reuniting and putting their feud aside at the end. Um, and in The Winter's Tale, there's something fairly similar about Perdita and Florizel coming together um, and Polyxenes and Leontes, who had been such close friends as children, being able to put aside their quarrel and be rehabilitated to each other. Leontes as a character is also interesting in comparison to someone like Othello, who also suspects his wife um, of adultery, of which she is entirely innocent. Although in that situation, you have the secondary character of Iago filling Othello's head with lies and really pushing this forward and baiting him onwards um, to destroy his own marriage. Whereas Leontes seems to do that all by himself um, with no outside help at all. In fact, everybody in his court are very convinced of the Queen's innocence and are trying to um, dissuade him from this course of action. There's an interesting theory that this situation could be a mirroring of what happened between Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. Famously, Anne Boleyn was beheaded on charges of adultery, um, along with other men who were convicted of being her lovers, um, although it does seem to be on extremely shaky ground whether that was true. And there can be some mirroring between Anne Boleyn's daughter, Elizabeth I, who was then 
and lost in a, in a way, at least banished from succession, um, very similar to the way Perdita is lost from Leontes and then at the end of the day restored again to his love in the way that Elizabeth I obviously then did come and succeed to the throne. In terms of adaptations of The Winter's Tale, there have been several. I only have personal experience, um, not with any adaptations of the stage play as itself, but wider interpretations such as Jeanette Winterson's book The Gap of Time, um, which is a reimagining of The Winter's Tale. I would not recommend this at all. I didn't think it was very good, so if you're looking for something else to read that isn't Shakespeare, I would, I would actually steer clear of that book. Something that I did really, really enjoy was Christopher Wielden's ballet, which was developed for the Royal Ballet a few years ago, which is absolutely beautiful visually, not just from the dancing and the choreography itself, but also from the set design, the costumes. It really brings to life the different moods, especially of the different halves of the play. And because ballet, by its nature, is hyper-real and very, theatrical. I think that works with the idea of someone being a statue and then coming back to life and some of the odd things that happen in The Winter's Tale. Um, I think you can almost believe it more if it's happening as part of a ballet um, or something that's very over the top as opposed to a very naturalistic um, staging of it. I would love to hear from you in the comments what you thought of The Winter's Tale, um, if there's any other themes, any other characters, any other ideas you have about the play, and also let me know what other plays you'd like me to talk about in this series. Are there any other elements in general of Shakespeare that you'd like me to discuss? What aspects of his work do you enjoy? What aspects do you find difficult? And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!